Good afternoon. Welcome, everybody. So this afternoon, uh, Vatsal and myself, we are going to cover the propane R290 variable speed application uh, from uh, Emerson. So we are going to explain you what's the benefit of using uh, variable speed in a single circuit design. So uh, what we've been developing at uh, Emerson, we are now more and more focusing on solution. Why do we do that? Because as you can see, there are more and more uh, challenges to be solved for the, for the customer, which are driven by either uh, regulations. Uh, we know also the supply chain topic. Uh, it's a little bit of pain for a lot of people. Also using uh, flammable refrigerant is also adding complexity. I mean, no, we are moving to natural refrigerant. It could be CO2, it could be propane. It's usually more, more complex. Uh, markets are moving relatively fast, so we need to help customers to go faster, to put product on the markets. And last but not least, we all know about this, it's about the high energy price. So whatever we can do to reduce the impact of the energy cost, this is beneficial for everybody. So this is a kind of uh, answers that we can provide. Uh, the solution we will discuss today is a natural refrigerant solution, so which is fully compliant with whatever revision of the F gas that you can uh, think about. Uh, the, the products uh, that we are supplying are manufactured in Europe. So I think this is a very good thing, not only from a lead time and supply chain, but also if you think about sustainability, we prefer to, you know, rather than having, oops, Sorry, rather than having um, products coming from uh, the other side of the world, I mean, we prefer to, to bring it from uh, our factory in, uh, in Europe. Uh, we do have uh, specialist people that can support the integration of the, of the products. Uh, this is, of course, very, very helpful uh, when you want to go uh, fast on the market. And the variable speed, we all know this is bringing efficiency. We will show you, uh, Vatsal will show you numbers from the field, but also numbers from the simulation, that there is no doubt that variable speed is indeed a very efficient solution, especially when you are using uh, BPM motors, which is the case with those, with the compressors that we have. So what is the solution about? So this is for display case. Uh, as you can see, you can do with the horizontal compressor, you can easily fit it on the top or on the bottom, and uh, it can fit uh, open door, closed door uh, application. It's valid for, for all. So if you look at the, at the, at the full picture, so you have at the, at the store level, you have um, um, uh, a bill, um, building management store controller, which is in communication with the rack controller. So we do have developed a specific rack controller for this application. Uh, this one is really, in fact, the brain of the solution. This is the one which makes sure that every component is working well together that you, know, you don't operate outside the allowed operating map of the compressor, for example, that you stay within the safe limits uh, of the components. The compressor is definitely the heart, I would say, of the system. To say this is the main, this is the main component. Uh, so as I say, eh, it's horizontal; it can fit easily on bottom. The advantage, of course, of the scroll is that it's a fully hermetic design. So for the propane, it's also uh, a safe approach to have uh, an hermetic compressor. Uh, it comes together with a drive. This is also very helpful for customers. The, the drive is already matched with the compressor. It's also EMC compliant compatible because we know uh, in Europe, uh, we have, uh, we have uh, some tough, let's say, EMC requirement, which when you use again uh, some drives coming from other region, let's put it that way, you're not necessarily ready to comply with those uh, EMC. But this is the case because we have labs where we can test the, the EMC compliance of the, of the solution. 
So we have also with a controller, we can uh, manage the, the temperature, of course. We have all uh, other components which are uh, approved for, for propane, eh? the expansion valve, the filters and so on, the sensors. And as I said before, we have a team uh, of people who can uh, support the implementation on the OEM side. So how do we come to such solution package? So as you can see, we have different steps. Uh, it's not only about developing a compressor, it's really developing and qualifying a solution. So we start first with the ID generation, then you, know, you start on simulation, paper calculation, and so on to see what, what can we do uh, if, we, if we use. Then we, we do a, a prototype to test uh, you know, usually this is a prototype uh, hardware. Then what we do, we, we do some uh, iteration and development to really, uh, let's say, optimize the solution because you cannot have it right from the first time. Then we do testing in our, um, in our environmental rule where we can test and simulate the cabinets. And then uh, we go... Uh, we go with other suppliers to, to provide, let's say, more than the, the solution, also the heat exchanger recommendations and things like that. And then after we run some field tests just to make sure that the solution we have designed, and that's what Vassal will cover, is indeed performing the way we want. So in the past, we were mainly providing multiple circuit solution limited to 150 gram. But now the good news, of course, is that the, the EN60335-2-89 uh, has been revised uh, last summer. And now you can go with 500 gram charge for the display case application. And actually, we've already been uh, supplying that solution, uh, mainly in the UK market, where there they've been using the EN378. But we've been, I mean, uh, running uh, quite a few stores uh, with this uh, solution, and it's been running fine over the time. Oops, sorry. So, if I if I sum up before giving it to Vatsal, what's what's in the, the the benefits of this? The first big interest is that going to variable speed compared to the multi fixed speed that I was showing in the previous slide you can save between 10 and 20% uh, of energy, so which is quite substantial. Uh, the, the second thing, it's propane, so this is really sustainable with the Europe manufacturing. Uh, also, what is important is that, of course, you need to make sure with propane that you have a safe solution. Uh, it goes faster for the OEMs to put the, the solution on the market, and then the compactness, because it's below 20 centimeters and you can put it on the top or on the bottom. And if you look at the product range that we have, we can cover not only the medium temp, but with the same compressor, we can cover the low temp application up to eight kilowatts. So when you see, in fact, you can easily do a large display case uh, without doors, but you can also do them with doors if you, if you wish. And on the low temp, we can go up to three kilowatts. So I will let Vatsal go over the performance. Thanks, Oliver. Yeah, so as I mentioned, as Olivia mentioned, that uh, energy, again, is a big topic these days. And uh, with the... Inc Are we good? Okay. Can we... Can you hear better? Yeah, okay, thanks. Um, so yeah, as I was saying that the energy is a big topic and of course the prices are going up high and that impacts the supermarket businesses also. Um, so really having cabinets with high efficiency is one of the requirements from the end users. Um, and what we feel here is that uh, if they run simulations, then that's something they can make a very informed uh, decision. So we have developed this simulation tool. It's called the Marketing Supermarket Simulation Tool, where we can provide different inputs. And then based on these inputs, they can um, evaluate their annual energy consumption and really make uh, an, a decision based on that. So what you see here is in terms of the inputs, we can have the, uh, we can select first the climatic region 
So we can select what uh, location this supermarket is in. And based on that, it will take the temperature and the weather conditions of that area. Then you can define the number of cabinets and uh, um, the kind of the configuration of the store itself. And you would also uh, can feed the water loop uh, configurations. Um, so that's at the supermarket level. But then at the cabinet level, for each cabinet, you can define whether that cabinet is empty or LT, whether it has doors or not, what length of it is defined, and then uh, whether it has night curtains and things like that. And then at the refrigeration circuit level, you can define the type of the compressor, um, what kind of refrigerant it is, um, also define the number of uh, circuits that it has, and the model would basically take all these inputs and run um, the simulation. And the output that you would find is basically the um, cooling demand that is required for the entire year. Um, with that, the model would then calculate the annual energy consumption. And essentially, what you get is the seasonal performance factor that, that's for the, for the entire year. Um, so with this uh, information, then uh, we have just run one sample um, uh, result. And what you can see here, it's just a single cabinet with uh, 3.75, oh, sorry. So this, this cabinet is for a 3.75 meter long and it's a medium temp cap cabinet. And the region that we selected here was Strasbourg, which is kind of the average uh, European temperature. And we can see that on the left with the open cabinets, the annual energy consumption is about 6.3 megawatt hours. And this is with our multi-circuit fixed speed compressor. Now, when you compare that with the variable speed solution, um, that the efficiency is much higher. We have 13% less annual consumption. And the same thing if you compare with the door cabinets, then the difference is almost 20%. So that's that's the kind of simulation studies when we can run with this with this tool. Um, here we are just comparing one cabinet, but that could be done for an entire supermarket. And we could also do things like total cost of ownership, um, heat recovery, and things like that, which again um, are important for the for the end users. So that's some of the result that I wanted to share with you regarding the supermarket tool. Second, I wanted to talk about the field measurements that Olivia mentioned about. Um, so we did uh, one study where we located two stores in Dublin, Ireland. And uh, here, um, we so one store was with the variable speed compressor with our horizontal scroll. And the other store was with the fixed speed horizontal scroll from our competition. And uh, you can see here, um, uh, so we selected eight different cabinets um, in both the stores, and they were both located in similar location and had uh, comparable products. Um, in terms of data me measurement, um, we installed the uh, power meters uh, and the uh, product probe temperatures in each cabinet. And uh, we also measured the water inlet temperature and outlet temperature in the loop, in the water loop. Um, we also measured the indoor store temperature and humidity, and that basically tries to give a good um, understanding of what conditions these cabinets are running in, in, in this store. Um, now, what you see on the right is the product probe temperature, and you can see the one with the blue that has a variable speed compressor. You can get much tighter temperature control compared to the fixed speed. And really, this is not a surprise, just because you can match the load so precisely, you can get uh, this temperature control much better. So that's so that's the, I'm sorry. Uh, so that was the product temperature. Now let's look at the energy data. And uh, again, before we go into the graphs, as I mentioned earlier, it's important to know what condition these cabinets are running in, right? Um, before we make any analysis, especially in a field study where you don't have exactly the same conditions. Um, and here you see uh, on the left that uh, we measured the water temperature, and this is one of the difference we saw between the two stores. So in the blue, we have the water inlet temperature in the loop. So that's the temperature going into the cabinets. And you see that the store with variable speed unit, which is in blue, has 7.2 Kelvin higher temperature compared to the one in the fixed speed. So that means the refrigerated cabinets were condensing at higher temperature. And of course, they were consuming more power. So even with the difference in the water condition, 
you see if you at the energy data during that period both the stores were consuming the, uh, the similar uh, consumption right so there's a difference of only 0.3 percent um, and that that uh, uh, energy consumption is reported per kilowatt, uh, so kilowatt hours per meter per day. So it's normalized for one cabinet per meter. And uh, if we simulate now that if the variable speed unit was was performing at the same water condition as the one with the fixed speed store, then we would see a 19% reduction in the energy consumption. So that's that's the kind of uh, difference that you would see. Um, looking again at a different period of the same month, in, uh, so these are the three days uh, at, towards the later part of the month, where we had the temperature difference of only three Kelvin, and you see the actual power consumption with the variable speed decreased down by, sorry, it got decreased down by 4.3%. So these are the kinds of um, um, evaluations that we were able to make. And basically we can conclude that with the variable speed, you can really get much better efficiency and at the same time get a better control, which are two important aspects uh, for uh, the end user. So that's uh, that's what we concluded from the field study. Yeah, do you want to take up the conclusion? So thanks. Uh, yeah, so just the key, the key points that maybe you need to remember from what we've just explained uh, this afternoon is first the variable speed, the main interest is indeed the efficiency, which you can reduce by 10 to 20 percent depending on the case. Uh, another advantage is the tighter temperature control. I mean, the, the field data that, that you've seen uh, are supporting that. Uh, it's much more flexible also when you have variable speed because then you can more easily adjust to the capacity or to the load and with only let's say three displacement we can basically cover medium temp, low temp and we can go from one to eight or 0.3 to three kilowatt of uh, cooling capacity. It's a proven technology we know in many other applications like heat pumps and so on, the variable speed is, uh, is available. The other good news of the moment is that the EN, the standard has been published. So it's now official at the Senelec. You can buy, you can download, uh, if you go on the Senelec website, it's there. It's going to be published before the end of the year in the official journal. And that's then when it's come as an official law. Then at that time, you can really uh, use it. And as I mentioned previously, it's a sustainable solution. So we might have one or two minutes for questions. I don't know if anybody has a question he would like to ask. Or everything was clear. <laughs> Looks like. Well, if no question, we, we thank you for your uh, attention and uh, we can you can visit us on our stand we will be happy to give you more uh, information thank you